Hey y'all, it is I, Miata Ajay Lovelay, and I am back. <laughs> Ooh, I did not like that intro. Let's try again. Bitches, I'm back. No. It's me, Miata. How do you say sorry for being gone for like a year? Ooh, ooh, she's back. Ooh, ooh, she's back. I'm rusty as hell. Ooh. Hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. It is I, Mia Talebele. If you don't already know who I am, I am an actor here in Los Angeles. You can find me in things like um, the just released Star Wars Jedi Survivor game just came out on Friday. I'm a character in there. Her name is Winnie. Um, I appear about two thirds of the way through the game. That is so fucking cool, you guys. I just started doing voiceover last year. So to have an opportunity this big, this early on in my career was amazing. I should be appearing in the upcoming season of Gen V. Gen V is a spinoff of The Boys. So if you watch The Boys, which is on Amazon Prime, I should be appearing in the spinoff. And I'm very excited about that. And you should be able to find me on the upcoming season of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, which is on Netflix. If they don't cut my sketch from the show. Sorry, like, look at my love handles. Y'all, I've gained some weight, and it is what it is because it made the titties bigger, but like, <laughs> Okay, so last year was just a really busy year, and it really just made me realize that I'm pretty much only going to be dedicating this channel to, like, Bridgerton content. It is what it is. I thought I would go off and do some other stuff, like other books. Y'all know I was doing Shadow and Bone at one point. I thought maybe I would do some shows on PBS that are like, you know, romantic period pieces. I actually just don't have the time, which is wonderful for my career, but it just means that this channel is just gonna be purely Bridgerton content from here on out. Now, let's get into it. So let's just start off with a few things. I guess I'll just start off with, I saw an early screening of the pilot of Queen Charlotte on Friday. Um, and how did I feel about it? Fucking loved it. Now, is this a surprise for me? Hell yes, this is a motherfucking surprise for me. Sorry, if you're new to my channel, I cuss. Hell yes, this was a huge surprise for me. I did not want to like this show. Now, caveat, I did see this at a screening full of Bridgerton fans. Um, so the energy in the room was full of people who wanted to like the show. So that also could be maybe, you know, that could be part of why I enjoyed it so much. I also went when we were having a Q&A with four members of the cast. Golda, who plays older Queen Charlotte, was there. India, who plays the new Queen Charlotte, was also there. Corey, who plays King George, was there. And Arsema, who plays young Lady Danbury, was there. So having them be there, being in a room full of, guys, I'm not even kidding, like 50% of the room was Black women. Bridgerton, Make sure that y'all are promoting Black reviewers and Black content makers on the internet because Black women fucking love this show. We love Bridgerton. We are out here standing for Bridgerton. When I went to the Queen's Ball, when I, I told y'all so many Black women up in there, Black women and women of color love this show. Let's make sure that we're promoting the reviewers and the content creators who are promoting your show. So I was just in a room full of people who so much love Bridgerton. So that could be part of why it was exciting to watch. But I will say, y'all, I went in there like a motherfucking hater. <laughs> I didn't want to like this show. I really didn't. And y'all are probably like, Miata, what? Like your whole thing is Bridgerton. Yes, it is. But I will just say, like, I have been feeling some kind of way about Bridgerton probably since last season. Oh, where do I start? Okay, so um, season two didn't leave me excited. Um, season two and the announcement of season three did not leave me excited about what was coming for Bridgerton. Now, did I think they were actually going to do a season with, what is the second brother's name? Benedict? How, how for a second? How am I forgetting this shit? How am I forgetting the brother's names? Anthony Benedict Collin, right? Daphne, Eloise, Francesca, Gregory, and, and then what's home girl? Hyacinth. Those are all the kids, right? I got it right, right? I was right. I know every one of these kids' names, okay? I used to know the names of all their partners, too, because I was in this shit. Okay, so we all knew that the third season was not going to be Benedict's season because, like, Benedict's story... So I knew I was fine with them changing it out and it being, um, being Penelope and Colin's season. I'm just not crazy about Penelope and Colin. I know! Boo, 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 tomatoes, hiss, hiss, boo! I just... For whatever reason, I'm just not feeling it. And usually when there is a plus size queen on screen getting hers, I eat it up. I eat it up with the spoon. You know what I mean? Like normally 
I love seeing plus size women in love on the screen, right? But I just wasn't very excited after season two. I, go watch my reviews if you want to see why I wasn't excited about season two. I love Johnny Bailey. I love Simone Ashley. I just didn't love the season as a whole. And then on top of that, as I've said many times, I don't think Bridgerton has the ability to really talk about race. What is the race thing in this? It is not colorblind. We know it's not colorblind, but whatever they're doing with race in this universe is hilarious and wild and I do not understand it. It's a very strange kind of amorphous kind of nebulous kind of opaque can't see through it don't understand it kind of understanding of race and when they've talked about race before in the show I've been like yeah and the colorism exhibited in season one I've talked a million times about season one had most of the black women who spoke in season one pass the paper bag test if you don't know what the paper bag test is it just means that your skin is the same color or lighter than a paper bag um, and the one dark skinned black woman who got to talk in season one was a servant who said five words. So I've just talked about it. I think they have an issue with race. I just didn't want to watch this show. Okay, but my ass got to go to a free screening. So I was like, let me in. So I went and saw it. And guys, again, like I said, I'm a hater. I'm a hater from the bottom of my heart. I'm a petty hater. And especially when it's actors, because I'm so jealous of them for being on the biggest show on the planet, getting to be gorgeous, getting to speak Shonda Rhimes' words. <laughs> I'm a jealous hater. So I didn't go into this really wanting to see anyone succeed. <laughs> I'ma be real with you. So I was watching and within, I want to say minute two and a half, India won me over entirely. Like I said before, India is the actress playing Queen Charlotte. Um, fuck. Y'all may not feel the same way, but just go into it knowing, like just with an open mind, even if you're like, I didn't really want to see a story about Queen Charlotte. I didn't either. I didn't care about Queen Charlotte as a character. I think Golda does amazing work as Queen Charlotte um, in the Bridgerton series. I think she's so funny. She's so talented. She's so beautiful. I love everything she's wearing, but it wasn't a story I necessarily wanted to see. India is so good. She's so good right away. The character is so comfortable in her own skin from the jump. She knows who she is. It doesn't feel like she's trying to figure out who the character is. It doesn't feel like she's trying to um, copy what Golda does in the Bridgerton series with Queen Charlotte. She has created her own version of young Queen Charlotte and she is a delight. The entire episode, she is a delight. I love her acting choices because we've talked about this before. The show is a bit anachronistic in terms of how it handles um, people's acting choices, right? Like sometimes you'll see Eloise be like, oh, something a high gentry born lady would not do in 1812. You know what I mean? Like something a woman, a noble born woman wouldn't be like, oh. It wouldn't happen in 1812, y'all. It wouldn't have happened in 1812. And sometimes I am taken out by those actions, but somehow India makes it work when she she does these little things sometimes that just feel, they don't feel anachronistic. They kind of feel like she's, she's, she's young, right? Like Queen Charlotte's much younger. She's a little bit more immature. She doesn't want to go marry King George. It worked and it worked in an amazing way. So talking about her, yes, amazing. Let's talk about some of the other things that really, really worked. Corey as King George. Ha! Ha! Now this, this man is younger than me and it feels wrong the way I feel. Uh, I am married. Um, I am deeply married. But when I tell you, and let me just say real quick too, when the trailers came out for the show, I was a hater on that too. I was not impressed by the trailer. Love to know your thoughts. If you guys saw the trailer and you were like, hell yeah. Or if you were like me and you were like, I watched the trailer, I felt meh. I think the best trailer they've ever done for the show was Bridgerton season two's last trailer, which was a lie, but that was a fucking good trailer. But Queen Charlotte's trailer just wasn't hitting. It felt like, I kind of knew what the story was about, but it felt like, why do we need this? So, and when I saw the trailer, I wasn't taken aback by Corey. I was like, okay, he looks like a brown headed man. He looks like he could be a Bridgerton brother. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, cool, that's cool. But then 
he and India, so in the trailer, if you guys remember, there's that moment where India, as Queen Charlotte, trying to climb up the wall and Corey as King George stops her. And I remember thinking, okay, yeah, like I said before, like Bridgerton brother looking ass. They did not capture these two people's chemistry one bit in the trailer. And I don't understand why, because when you guys see this, you will understand what I am talking about. These two people, oh, just like, it was shocking. It was shocking. They meet for the first time right before their wedding. I'm not gonna go into spoilers for this. This should be a pretty spoiler free um, review because I do wanna make sure that um, we are all waiting for the show to come out. If you want spoilers, this is not the right review channel for that. I'm just gonna talk in general terms about like my first impressions of it. But when he and her meet at the wall, they're instantly attracted to each other. The reason I'm so excited about this is because what I learned at the Q&A, India and Corey both talked about the fact that um, Shonda did chemistry reads. They did chemistry reads between India and Corey and they did chemistry reads between India and Arsema. And Arsema again is playing Lady Danbury. The reason chemistry reads are so fucking important and the reason Shonda's work the reason all of Shonda's shows work so well is because she does chemistry reads between the leads. Something that has happened a lot during COVID is um, because of COVID restrictions and because just in general of having to fly people out while people are getting COVID, they kind of stopped a lot of chemistry reads during COVID. Corey actually said, Corey again, who plays King George, actually said he was so grateful that he um, got to do a chemistry read in person because he thinks that actually helped him get the part. It was in London um, and it was in person and I thought, amazing, I've got a chance at least. Um, yeah, so it was, exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was very, very glad and privileged to have had that opportunity and I actually don't think that it would have gone, gone my way if, if I hadn't been in the room. So yeah, very, very thankful. It's so much harder to do chemistry reads and, and work with other people over Zoom. Sometimes there's lag, sometimes tone is off. So they both talked about in the Q&A how great it was to have these chemistry reads. And it shows, honey! It shows. Guys, they meet for the first time and it is just... It, it, they have chemistry so much faster than I think any of the other couples have on the show. And there's reasons for that. Obviously, I, I, Simon and Daphne took a little time to make their way to each other because they were faking it. Uh, Johnny Bailey was obviously smoldering all season at us. My God. <laughs> but it did, because the show spent so much time away from those two, we didn't get to really see them like in their element until that, like until they went to the party in the country in season two. But right away, these two have just like, and it's such a cute, it's a cute little, it's not like this overly like sexual thing. It feels like two people who meet each other and immediately have a crush on each other. Like that first love kind of feel, that kind of like innocence, but also like, what is this? I don't know what I'm feeling. It felt like that. And it was really, really, really nice. It was so cute. When they got married, I was like so happy. I went with my friend. We were both just so happy watching them like just basically fall in love at their own wedding. Um, obviously, I'm sure there are other reviewers out there by now who have seen the show and are giving you more information about what happens after the wedding, so I'm not going to go into that. But just, it is a delight to watch a show, and it is always a delight to watch Shonda Rhimes work because she knows what she's doing with her cast. Y'all, we watched Scandal. Scandal had Olivia Pope falling in love with Fitz, a Republican president, and she was his mistress, and we were rooting for them. I wanted him to kill Melly, his wife the mother of his children, for Olivia, his mistress. Shonda has us fucked up and it's lovely. I don't want this video to be too, too long. And like I said before, since I'm not giving away spoilers or really going into individual things that happened, I'm just now gonna go from my really, really great things that I love, which I just discussed, into my, hmm. Now, the thing I was not expecting about this show, the thing I did not understand about this show, it hops back and forth between the past and the present the present. It hops back and forth between when Queen Charlotte was young and then the Queen Charlotte that we know. Queen Charlotte of the present has lost someone in her family, so there's a big old funeral. It is not King George though, okay? I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to say anything like that. I want y'all to be like, we ought to say King George dead. Nah, 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 I didn't say it. 
but someone in their family has passed away, so she is having a funeral. And we do see at Joa, who plays Lady Danbury, and we also see Ruth Grimmel, who plays Violet Bridgerton, the mom. So the show hops back and forth between past and present. It works in this episode for what's happening in the present, the present, is because I think just Golda is so funny. Um, what she's doing is very funny. Um, it, it's fun to hang out with her. I do wonder though, how much the hopping back and forth is going to take away from the um, story of young Charlotte and young George. Shonda's good at what she does. Knowing that she's in the writer's room for this show, knowing that she wrote the pilot and hopefully has written other episodes makes me feel very good about her knowing how to balance those things pretty well. But I just want to say, after season two left me feeling quite bleh, because of all the jumping around, the different storylines we were jumping around, I'm just a little apprehensive about how much jumping around is going to happen in this season. Hopefully, we mostly have young Charlotte, young George, and every once in a while, we're coming back to the present. And for all I know, this is just something that they wanted to do a lot of in the first episode, just to reacclimate us to this world. So we're going to see, that was just the one thing that I was a little like, hmm, about. Now on to my what the fuck. There's no what the fuck in this, honestly. I really enjoyed this episode of television. What I will just say is there's only one thing I did not like. Lord Danbury. Yes, guys, we get to meet Lord Danbury in this. Lady Danbury's um, deceased husband. We get to see her when she's younger and the man that she's married to. Now, basically, Lady Danbury in this world was married to a much older man. Lady Danbury is probably supposed to be about what we say, like 18 or so, maybe 20 at tops. Her husband looks to be about, he's supposed to probably be like in his 60s. I mean, he's a gross old man. He is supposed to be a gross old man, right? He, he, he's supposed to be disgusting. He's got these dentures that are disgusting and brown, basically. And he takes them out after they have sex. He looks like he smells. He's always falling asleep. He's just, he's just a gross old man. Something about the way the man is makeup and the performance is giving minstrel act. For those of you that maybe are not from the United States and are not, um, maybe not as familiar with minstrel acts, but basically in the early part of the 20th century here, especially during Jim Crow, um, post-slavery, we had what was called minstrel acts. Minstrel acts were performed both by white and black performers who would literally put on blackface, they would over-exaggerate their lips, and they would do, perform songs, perform shows, you know, plays as exaggerated caricatures of black people. Anyway, something about the way his makeup, his makeup felt darker than the actor's actual skin. Something about it just, it didn't. And something about the way his hair was, something about it to me just, it, it gave me the ick. Did something just ever give you the ick? I know they weren't like, make him this. I know that wasn't their intent. But also something about the performance, him just being this kind of like befuddled, something about it gave me the ick. And I'm not, I don't think it was purposeful. I don't think they were thinking about it. I don't think anyone was trying to do anything gross. Just something about that particular performance where it's kind of a, he's a buffoon of a man. And I'm just... There's a fine line between, I think, a black person being ridiculous on screen and being in on the joke and then being not in on the joke. And in this case, he is the butt of the joke, but it just, it rubbed me the wrong way and I don't know how to describe it. And I know it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal because they weren't trying to in any way, shape or form make this man into a, like, a menstrual character. Just something about it was a little like, mm. So I'm, I'm interested to see how this character continues over the course of the episodes. But other than that, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. I loved it. The way the first episode ends is shocking, kind of shocking. And um, just in terms of where you think the story is going to go, but it's exciting because it leads us, it's going to allow us to have so much more story to look forward to. Okay, guys, that is it for now. I just wanted to give my basic thoughts in this first episode. I did not want to give away too, 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 too much because I think we should all be discovering this together. What I will say is I'm probably going to do it um, do my reviews the way I did last season. Now, if you guys watch both my reviews for my first season and last season, drastically different types of reviewing. First season, I was very classy. I wore, literally bought Regency era dresses, super classy. I, I, I was in, I was in a lovely room in a lovely chair and I would just talk about the episode and my viewpoints. I would literally go through, talk about what happened in the episode and how I felt about it. Baby, that takes time. 
I don't have it anymore, okay? So what I'm gonna be doing is like what I did last season, which is when I would take a shot or two, sure did, sure was drunk, take a shot or two, and then go ahead and, and watch the episode. Obviously this will be a rewatch. I'm going to binge all the episodes this coming up Friday, and then I am going to put out a full season review at the, at the beginning, probably on Saturday, and then after that I'll go back through and do episode by episode breakdowns. Um, and by breakdowns I mean get viciously drunk and talk about the show. I don't think I'm gonna need to drink as much this <laughs> with Queen Charlotte as I did with season two of Bridgerton because if episode one is setting the tone for the season I think I'm gonna enjoy it so much that I'm not gonna need the alcohol to help me power through another scene about the Featheringtons but we're gonna find out if you wanna uh contribute to my um cash app to give me alcohol please do um I'm not an alcoholic by the way some of you guys were worried about me guys I only drink really during Bridgerton time okay Hey, I haven't really drunk like that since Bridgerton because my liver needed a break, okay? I was taking like three to four shots just to review episode by episode, okay? Mama's not doing that. Mama might be doing that, but Mama hasn't been doing that, okay? So friends, that is it for now. Looking forward to seeing you guys in, what, five days or so when I'm going to release my, my full season thoughts. And then over the course of the next probably about three weeks, I'll be releasing maybe two episode a week reviews of Queen Charlotte and I am actually very excited. I haven't felt this excited about reviewing Bridgerton probably since season one. So I'm really excited about it. I hope you guys are excited. I hope you guys come back please and spend your time with me as we go through season one of Queen Charlotte. As always remember to like and subscribe and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.